This episode is brought to you by European Wax Center. Make a reservation today and your first wax is on European Wax Center. European Wax Center are the experts in making every body smooth. When you visit your European Wax Center, you get the best of the best. Their certified wax specialists are expertly trained in prepping, protecting, and pampering your skin. And you know that because you lay down and they look and they're like, okay, you need this. And then they do the comfort wax and it's not even that bad. And then they'll often put like a serum to help you. And they're just like the nicest people and you're having a little kiki with them. Like it's so easy. And the comfort wax is very important. It's a proprietary blend of beeswax sourced from Europe and other skin soothing ingredients that adheres to the hair and not the skin. So it's virtually pain-free. You can get in and out in like 15 minutes, guys. It's so easy. It's such a great way to feel confident in the summer and we can't wait for you to try it. So get in there. Whoever you are, whatever you wax, you deserve to feel smooth at European Wax Center. Make a reservation today and your first wax is on European Wax Center. That's right. The first wax is free. What's up, our namaste bitches? I am Melissa Feaster, and I'm here with my girl, my Jersey girl, that is, Teresa. And Teresa, who else do we have with us today? The one and only, the OG from New York, Ramona Singer. What's up, Ramona? Well, I have to say, I really haven't done many podcasts, and I'm really excited to do this with the two of you. So it's like in the family, so yay. Yeah, no, it, it was kind of cool saying the OG, right? I mean, do OGs. Right? Well, OG yeah, so. We're OGs. And I'm just the weirdo blonde that's, you know, not no. the OG. You no. just got to fit in. You just filtered your way in and you just became part of the whole thing. You know what? I'm the OG of my house with my four and I'm five-year-old. So how about that? Yeah. Hello. I you're the OG. It. You have your own podcast. You have a podcast with me. You're a nutritionist. You you're a mom. You're a beautiful wife. You have a lot going on. Look exactly. at this. Thank you. She's my manager too, Ramona. I don't know if yeah. you, I told you that. But <laughs> yo, That's good. you know what I love, uh, Ramona? I'm big on names. Freaking turtle time. <laughs> what is that? Is that like from her show? Well, Ramona's the queen of turtle time and now the podcast coming out. So basically it was season three. Uh -huh. I was renewing the vows with my ex-husband. Okay. And of course I couldn't take a bachelorette party because I was already married. So it was a girl's trip before I renewed my vows. And we went to St. Thomas, which is kind of a scary island episode. And we had this gorgeous yacht. And there, when we were walking outside of the yacht, I had a big glass of wine in my hand because we were yacht hopping. Uh -huh. And there was great music blasting from the bar called the Turtle Bar or the Turtle something. And I go, come on, girls. It's turtle time, meaning let's dance. Let's drink and dance and laugh yeah. and have fun. And I got all the girls to go. And that has been known as turtle time. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Ramona, Ramona, it's more than that because like Teresa, okay, you have to me. watch the moment. It's, it's like, they're all drinking. I don't know how sober we all are here at this no, moment. No, I'm actually trash at this point. Yeah. I Ramona, okay. I just didn't want to go there and say that. She, she, Ramona's had a lot of vino, okay? Yeah, yeah. And it's a lot like of vino whole, grigio. She's on a dock. You're like, holy fuck, is she going to go go overboard in one second? Because she's like twirling the wine and she's twirling her hips and her body. I think you were even in a blue dress. I mean, that's how much I remember. It was remember a Cavalli. That. It was a Cavalli dress. Oh, yes. wow. That's so so nice. it's just a whole moment, Teresa. If you go back and watch moments, like if people, I'm sure, would All right, go back so and watch. All right, so now that, you know, I'm going to write yeah. it down. And wait, wait, wait. And Teresa is in the alternative dictionary. The mm -hmm. alternative dictionary. If you Google turtle time in the tr alternative dictionary, it goes, Ramona Singer having fun, drinking, and with her friends dancing, having turtle time with a glass of wine in her hand. That's dope. Isn't that so crazy? Like turtle time. Like who, like you wouldn't think that would make such a big thing. And like, and like oh, it's it's huge. Exactly, exactly. Like you never know like what, like the fans are going to love, you know? Hello, flipping tables, Teresa. Come on. I, well, it's the same I know. Thing. You're the queen of table flip. And Ramona, after I did that, I was just like, I was mortified. I really was because I never did that before. And I was, because I was just so angry. And then afterwards I was like, oh my God. I was like, I felt so bad. And then it ended up being like, I, that was. Iconic. Wait, Iconic. That year I saw it on the Emmys. I saw the, there you the, go. the video of me flipping the table on the Emmys. And I was like, what? It was like, like you know, it was really sur a surreal moment. These moments that both of you guys have, which is incredible. And now the turtle time has spun its way into your new podcast with your amazing daughter, Avery, that we just saw. 
she, yeah. you guys are like uh, now when we see saw you guys next to the each dynamic. other. Holy shit! It's like one face. It's crazy. Well, sometimes she's the mother and I'm the daughter. Ah, that's good. So, what are we doing with this podcast now? Turtle time. Well, it's going to drop today, and it's about. I think we'll be the, one of the only podcasts with the mother daughter relationship. And the thing is, we're very close. And we're going to talk about everything. Re- nothing will be held back. Relationships, dating, sex, finance, friendships. You know, we'll ask our viewers what they want to know. And you're fine, like, talking sex with Avery and stuff? Oh, yeah. She does. She gets a little embarrassed. She's like, Mom, Mom, TMI. I'm like, hello. It's oh, part of life. Right. So she's hearing about your sex. You're hearing about her sex. But well, she doesn't tell me too much about her sex. But what if people are calling and they're like, Avery, what's the last time that you were, like, had the mess sex of your life? Well, that's a good question, and she better answer it. Wow. And then what if they're like, Ramona, when's the time that you've had the best sex of your life? Uh, I will answer it. <laughs> yeah. And neither one of you will be like earmuffs, earmuffs. We signed up for this. We said <laughs> everything will be disclosed. So therefore, we're going to give the fans what they want, right? Okay. I'm calling and Teresa and I are going to be your first callers and we're going to ask. No, no, not <laughs> fair. Not fair. No, 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 no. Wait, so Ramona, <laughs> are you talking about sex? Are you with anyone? I'm dating for sure. Good for you. All right. Good, 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 good. I'm glad. So what? We have one. We have many. We have anyone serious. I decided to manifest, which I want to really go in depth with on my podcast. You know, I've always, you know, like Teresa has been very driven with my children and her career and her family. I've never was driven with how to find the right man. And I finally decided to make my list and manifest what I want. So now I'm only dating men who hit a lot of my criteria. And I believe it or not, I have 20 characteristics. And people laugh at me, but I'm actually now finding many of them when I date because I'm not going to settle for anything. You know what? Like Teresa, we've been married. We've made, had our homes. We've had our children. So yes, I know Teresa, you got married again, but you didn't need to get married. You got married because you really oh, wanted exactly. this. And it's very difficult. What people don't realize that when you've been married and now you're divorced and you have older children, you're financially independent, it's really hard to find that right partner because now all of a sudden it's more hedonistic. It's about what you two can give to each other. You're not like distracted by, you know, having a career and running the home and raising the children and trying to build wealth and building your dream home and developing friendships and the schools and then this and then that. Yeah, it's so, it's so different now. Like Life now, is different. Right? Yeah, like now it's like Louie and I have fun together. It's like, it's all about fun. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Like once in a while, we have to deal with children stuff on a different level. But it's like, it's beautiful. And it's like so much more relaxed now. It's not yes. like, you know, when, the, like you know, raising kids. It's not where I am. So, yeah, it's it's a, uh, it's a lot. It's a, Ramona, I have a four and a five-year-old. Honey, you have to wait 20 years. Yes, you know, exactly. And I have. It's a I lot. I can't wait she 20 won't... minutes at this point. I was literally the doctor is getting my kids stitches, three stitches by a plastic surgeon because he freaking fell. I mean, this is, but this is my life. This, but. Like what you guys were saying, I don't get that. It is way down in the far, far future for me. Yeah. But you know what? Cherish the moments because they go by so yeah, fast. Right, Teresa? I know. Yeah. I yeah. Know. I mean, I, I don't miss them being young because I, you know, I was very hands on. I was with them all the time. I like this age. I love that I enjoy them. Like I love bonding with them. Like I'm sure that's how you feel, Ramona, with your daughter. Like I love their age right now. Like I love it. Well, they're they're many adults, and they become now your your good friends. They're not just your children; they become your friends, and you can relate to them on a whole totally different level. That is so much more meaningful and special and yeah. different. The girls were just in the Bahamas with their dad for Easter, right? And then Sunday night, we got home from St. Bart's, and I was just sitting in our bedroom, and I and they sent me pictures of with Joe, and then the pictures of the four of them. They just posted on Instagram. Melania just posted it. And um, I started crying. I'm like, because I yeah. miss them. And I was like, I miss, right. I miss my... And you miss sharing your moment. Only a, away for a week and I miss them. And I was just like, oh. Because no matter how established you are in your career, in your life, whatever, you're always, like Teresa and I always talk about, you're always a mom first. Like nothing comes before that. Ever. And when you get divorced, as Teresa is too, the holidays are something special. And, you know, um, I only had one child. So in the beginning, thank goodness, Avery, I don't even say she sided with me, but she was, she never left me alone. So she was with me for every Christmas and every Easter. And then since COVID now, Mario and Avery and I, no matter who we're with, we spend the holidays. I mean, I had Mario here for 
for Easter dinner with his new girlfriend. Uh-huh. Aww. <laughs> Listen, I wanted to ask you that because you and Teresa are similar in that aspect because, I mean, we had Joe, her ex, on our podcast. They're cool. You're obviously very cool with, with Mario. Say he ditched the new girl and he was like, Ramona. I love you. I screwed up. You are the love of my life. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, have passionate sex every single day. Will you take me back? And I had my chance during COVID and all my friends knew the strong sexual chemistry Mario and I had. They go, all right, come on, tell me now. How often did you have sex with Mario? Because they saw, we had this, we were married for 20 plus years. We still had hot, hot, hot sex. And I go, no, I just, I just, no, I, I like him a lot. I love him as a person, but I'm not attracted to him at all. Since you guys were done, did you guys ever access no. with benefits? Nothing? No, never, ever. I told you, I, I don't, I don't desire him. I don't. And trust me, I didn't really want to get divorced. I loved him. And I stayed for a year, even though he was still, you know, doing his shenanigans because I believe in marriage. I believe in love. I believe you stay with someone and make it work. And after a year I go, you know what? I did it all that I could. And I, it's just killing me. I got to move on. And once I moved on, that was it. It It's over. Just something in me died and closed for him. Well, that's, I mean, that's how I feel with Joe. Like I would never, I don't desire not to be mean, and I hate to no, I say that I, I don't desire him at all. That's not me. I mean, it was different. Like that was it. Like once he left, I mean, I thought I was going to still be with him when he left for prison. And then look, I was never, ever with him again. And then I saw him when he came out of prison and I said, I'm going to see how I feel when I see him. And right. there was nothing there, like absolutely nothing. Like I just gave him a tap kiss on the lips when I saw him. And right. that was it. Like nothing ever happened ever again. I understand. Like that. nothing. So like when it happened, I it used happens. to always think Dolores was lying about her and Frank. And, right. and, and, and now after being in it, I said to do, I, I apologize to Dolores one day. I was like, I was like, I'm sorry. Now I get it that you could be close with your ex and without nothing going on. Exactly. Oh, because you thought Dolores still had feelings for Frank. Yes, because they were so close, you know, like they used to, I remember like, well, no, more than that. She thought they were still making nookie nookie. Yeah, I thought that they would still fool around because she would sit on his lap and it was just their their chemistry was different. And right. I was just like, I would never, I don't even think I would even sit on Joe's lap. I don't know. I don't know. You don't want to feel what could happen if you sat on Joe's lap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> so like, I don't know. I just wouldn't. You know, but I think it's really important. You know, you're not in that situation, Melissa, and hopefully you never will be. But when you get divorced and you have children, I think it's really important for both parents to not trash each other right. and keep it going for the children and be together for the sake of the children and their own emotional stability. It's so important. Yeah. And you know, what Melissa's went through that with her parents, right? Melissa, do that's oh, what you yeah. told me. I mean, I have that in my family, like all the hell from the divorce and the sides and the, this and the hating and all that. But so yeah, hopefully, you know, I pray that. Oh, that would never happen. Well, I mean, tell you the truth. I never thought, Ramon, did you ever think you were going to be divorced? I thought I'd be married forever. Me too. Me I too. waited. I waited till I was 37 years old. Wait, you okay? got married at 37? I got yes, married. You did? Yes. Uh, wait, I when got did you married? have Avery? 39. Wow. I never knew that. Wow. Yeah. I got and married I at 27. Married I got married at 27. Yeah, you got married young. My last kid was 39, Ramona. My first child was 39. got married at 37. You know, my parents did not have a great marriage. And my mother always taught me, you know, be independent, marry for love. Um, don't marry for money and make sure you make your own money because God forbid it doesn't work out. You can be financially independent. So I listen, I lived in New York. I was always attractive and dating was never my problem. Yeah. And I was afraid of marriage. And then I realized, oh my God, it's time. I'm getting older. I want a kid. So yeah. Do you think the show had anything to do with you guys, the demise of you two? Um, yes and no. I think it was more, he went through a midlife crisis and I think it would have happened whether it was on the show or not. Um, he had a midlife crisis. He had it a little later. I mean, when I went to my therapist, because your husband's having a midlife crisis, I laughed. She goes, this is not a joke. This is true. I thought it was a joke. I, th- I didn't know there was such a thing as a midlife crisis. That's what he was having. And I have to say, I, I thought you and Mario were such a beautiful couple. We were. We yeah. No, I remember that. And I love how he was Italian. He would talk. To yeah. Him. And like, I remember your, when you renewed your valves, because there was clips I would watch, you know, but then I never right. watched the whole thing, you know? So, but they were beautiful. You guys were beautiful together. No, we had a great relationship for many years until it wasn't, you know, he just, 
he changed. People do change. You know, it's yeah. very, let's, let's think about, it. are we, are we met in this generation, this to be married to the same person for 30, 50 years? I don't know. You know, people can change together. Or they change apart. And, and we just, we just change. You know, he didn't want to work anymore. I was still into working. He just wanted to play tennis mm -hmm. and golf. I was still to be entrepreneurial. It changed, you know, and, and, and I think the fame, cause he did say to me at one point, he said, Ramona, I felt emasculated by you, um, but I realized it wasn't you. I did it to myself. Me, totally. It was him. So, you know, his, his business wasn't doing great and I was becoming, you know, more famous and I was developing all these businesses and he just felt inadequate. This episode is brought to you by European Wax Center. Make a reservation today and your first wax is on European Wax Center. European Wax Center are the experts in making every body smooth. When you visit your European Wax Center, you get the best of the best. Their certified wax specialists are expertly trained in prepping, protecting, and pampering your skin. And you know that because you lay down and they look and they're like, okay, you need this. And then they do the comfort wax and it's not even that bad. And then they'll often put like a serum to help you. And they're just like the nicest people and you're having a little kiki with them. Like it's so easy. And the comfort wax is very important. It's a proprietary blend of beeswax sourced from Europe and other skin soothing ingredients that adheres to the hair and not the skin. So it's virtually pain-free. You can get in and out in like 15 minutes, guys. It's so easy. It's such a great way to feel confident in the summer and we can't wait for you to try it. So get in there. Whoever you are, whatever you wax, you deserve to feel smooth at European Wax Center. Make a reservation today and your first wax is on European Wax Center. That's right. The first wax is free. Pick up that glass of Pinot Grigio, your drink of choice, and come have some fun with us on Turtle Time. We're going to do more than just drink and party on this podcast, Mom. I know, I know. Okay, if you don't know who I am, well, I'm Ramona Singer, and that's my daughter, Avery. And you probably know us best from the Real Housewives of New York. And now you'll get to know us even better on our podcast, Turtle Time. Let's make more iconic moments together every Wednesday. It's Turtle Time. Follow, rate, and review now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. You know what? Speaking of divorce, Ramona, I feel like I'm getting a divorce from you from our TV screen. What the hell is happening right now? What's happening? Well, the good news is because I'm doing, but some of the reasons I want to do a podcast with Avery. Number one, it's a great way for me to bond with her and stay connected because she's living in Chicago. I'm living in New York. And it's a great way for me to stay in touch with my fans. And it's a great way for me to be me and not be edited. You know, I can be unfiltered, but I'm not edited. Because sometimes, you know, Teresa, and, and this is for great TV, they edit a certain ways, which, you know, we all sign up for and it's okay because I do what I do. But Wait, it's a way for me to stay in touch. a certain way? Come on. Uh -huh. No. Oh, no. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. No, no. <laughs> This is this is one thing I said to production after I go, why would you do this to me? So Teresa and I went on the ultimate girls trip, right? And I'm on the plane and all my fans are saying, you better get the best room. You better get the best room. And I was just planning to go there, just play along with however we got the room. I go, okay, you know what? I'll just play this role. Kenya, you get the best room because it's the first time you leave your daughter who's so young and you're getting divorced. You get the master suite. And of course, you know, I Google and research everything. I knew there are other three beautiful guest rooms upstairs. And I knew someone loves the tub. I think it was Teresa. That was me. That was, yeah, I know, like it was you, tub. right? The tub. So I chose the room upstairs. I go, so as soon as we walk in, I go, this will be my room. I'm the longest running OG. I'm the eldest here. I deserve this room. I deserve this room. So I made a little stink about it, right? And they're like, no, no, that's not the way we do it. I go, fine. And we go downstairs and we play a game. And we have to pick stars. So I picked a star that was numbered. And my number was like two or three, which means I get the number two or three room, which is would be the top three upstairs. They cut that all out. They just showed I stole the room, which I never did. They just showed the Ramona fit over the room like we see normally when you guys are on trips. Well, no, that was only the first four seasons. Oh, and then I stopped God. after five seasons. But of course, I still get the... But it's okay. It's all good stuff. Okay? Yeah, I didn't I mind that. And then it was so funny walking into her bedroom and she's like <laughs> butt naked, taking a shower. I'm like, I fucking love this girl. She's awesome. Ramona, only you can say it was only for four seasons and you're cute about it. You go only four seasons. Well, maybe five. <laughs> 
I think Bethany put the end, she put the kibosh. Because what bullshit is it at you? And it's because I had a rationale. I love to rationalize everything. <laughs> I said, you know, Sonia and I are sharing a room. So, of course, it's two people, one room. So we get the best room because we're two. So what did you think about doing the girls trip? And like, are you, is this happening again? Like your legacy is now an ultimate girls trip. What's happening? You know, I don't really know what's happening. I mean, I do know they wanted to do the legacy show. I'm at the point in my life right now, at this moment, I really, I don't want to film for three months straight. So I, I would not want to do any show for three months straight. I don't care what show you offered me, housewives or anything, because I'm doing so much more in my life. Been there, done that. I just want to take a step back. But, you know, it may not be a bad idea to just do an all housewife New York City trip for a week. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I would do it. Maybe I won't. I don't know if it's going to happen or not happen. I have no clue about anything. Wait a minute. But did you say, I want to leave on peace New York? Or they said, we don't know if we're coming back. How did that go? Like, I, I don't understand where it went wrong. My feeling is it was just, it was the first time they had a lot of different international people on the show and i think they wanted not to renew some people and to make no one upset they decided to fire everybody so they fired the entire show and they start they're starting all new so they have a whole new show coming out with women who don't even really know each other that well but you know listen bravo i think knows what they're doing so hopefully it'll be a great show and yeah but i thought there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that was not good with that well, you go ahead. You tell me. Yeah, no, I heard that, that like it was very controversial and, and like I didn't know if they were going forward with it. They are. Well, that's probably why we're talking about this legacy now, because we don't know what's going on and what's happening. No. I mean, have they finished their season? Yes. And are they airing it? Yes. But I don't think the date has been um, oh, okay, has come out. Okay, yet. Cause, you know, I, that's what I heard. Like it was very. No, they got they they um. They decided to ha leave one woman who became too politically charged and was making the show very political, which viewers- That's what I heard, yeah. Yeah, viewers just want- Okay, yeah, no viewers wants to watch, get into that, yeah. Right, viewers just want to see us having fun. They want conflict resolution, conflict resolution. They don't want to be preached to. They can turn into Fox, CNN, or- Whatever. They, they don't want, want turtle chill. time and table flips. Yeah, turtle time. Yeah, and they want what's really going on in the real world. Like, like meaning like, right. with, like girlfriends, like you do unfortunately get into drama with your, you know, if you go on vacation with your girlfriend, like absolutely it happens or, you know, somebody says the wrong thing. They didn't mean it that way. You know, and then they get yeah, upset. Absolutely. You know? But if Bravo came to you or Peacock and said, Ramona, two million bucks, we're doing a season, three months. No. No. Nothing. I'm over it. No, I mean, I've done it already, Melissa, for 16 years. I started 16 I years oh, ago. So My daughter's 20. She'll be 28. I started when she was 11. I want to do other things now, you know? You know, the podcast is good. I'm doing um, what I love doing right now is Dorinda, Luann, and I were on tour. We're going to go up to three cities in Dallas, Texas. That'll be nice. Yeah, I, I saw Austin, that. Austin, San Antonio. So I do that. I have, so I have those gigs to do. And, you know, I'm just enjoying my best life. I like cooking for my friends, entertaining. I live between New York City, Southampton, Palm Beach. I travel, Bahamas, St. Bart's, Aspen, Europe. You know, I I'm living my best life. You know, I could be dead next year. So I'm going to live my life now. You're, you're not going to be dead. I'm not going to be appreciate dead. I'm not you're not going to be dead, but I appreciate the life, like what you're living and just grabbing the ball, yeah. like the, 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 the bull by the balls and the horn and going and just doing you. Uh, yeah. with hopefully remember, a lot I'm, of a little, I'm a little older than you, Melissa. You're and not. I'm a little older than Teresa. Point is, I lived a very full life. I mean, like, you know, Teresa, we were like buyers in the city. We worked our asses off as buyers at Macy's and wherever else we worked. And I worked hard my whole life. And I you know what? I don't want to work so much anymore. I want to enjoy myself. I worked hard, saved money, accumulated some nice real estate, and I want to enjoy my life. Was there something that you didn't like about the first Ultimate Girls Trip? Or were there people? Because you, listen, you're, you are, the look at 16 years. And then these other people come on and they might have ideas about you or think who, you know, Ramon is this or that. What was tough about it? Well, for me, the, the toughest thing, and you know what? I have a uh, thick skin because I grew up with a lot of abuse and shouting and anger. And I'm, I'm, I've learned to just like ignore it. And that's why I think I'm good with TV because I just ignore the cameras and I'll, you know, I'll sense it. And I ignore the the haters on Instagram. I, I'm like, you know, I just, I, but filming, filming Ultimate Girls Trip, I just felt 
that Kenya and I did not get off on the right foot. I really had hoped that she and I would bond well together because she and I have similar backgrounds. And I remember even talking to the producer, like, like, I don't know why. I feel like she really dislikes me. And I'm finding filming very unpleasant. It actually was like hurtful to film. It was painful to film around her. For me, for me. It probably wasn't painful for her to film around me. But I felt, I felt like, like not comfortable. And it was actually like unpleasant. And the whole trip, you mean? It was just, you know what, listen. You're going on a girl's trip. It's six women who you're intimately involved with together, right? You are, it's, it's, it's you know, you're, you're, you're waking up morning, noon, and night. And I felt like no matter what I said, everything was wrong. And it was just, it upset me. Cause you know, I'm a people pleaser. I'm a caregiver. I love people. My friends who know me, they love me. I mean, doing a TV show, I'm obviously they don't tell me what to do, but as Luann would say, uh, I love to start the fire and leave, you know? And uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that was, you know, but then Kenya and I did make up at the end. So that was good and that made me feel good. And, but yeah, that was the only unpleasant part for me was just, I felt like she and I got off the wrong foot and it was, you know, it was difficult for me to handle for me, emotionally and psychologically. Have you guys talked since at all? We've talked from the same standpoint, like I supported her on Dancing with the Stars and, you know, she'd say, can you post this for me, an Insta story, this, and listen, I believe women should support women. I do that all the time. I'm a big believer in that. There's enough room for everybody. And I think a lot of women just are, are they just don't like to help women. I don't know if it's jealousy, threat, they're threatened. Or maybe yeah, I, both I and, deal with a lot of that. Right? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Because women are crazy. But I'm all, see, I'm all about that, Ramona. Your daughter asked me, I'm like, of course I'll post for you. I'm all about lifting each other up. I'm all about that. Women empowerment. I'm all about that. Right. Let's help each other, you know? There's enough room. I mean, the same thing with Ramona and I. It's like she's, like she said something about me on the girls' trip. Like she was just, I guess, right? Remember that? Like something about this. Yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. And of course, who tells me is my sister-in-law. It's yeah, like, I know. It's like somebody else should have took that. You know, she should have been like, you know, what? I'm not going to tell my sister-in-law that. But of course, you know, she took the bait. And then me, Ramona and I spoke about it. And, you know, she's like, and she apologized. We talked it through. Yeah, and she apologized to me. How was the first convo? I have to know. Because I don't think I even, Ramona, I even asked Teresa. Because now that just got me thinking. How was the first conversation with you two after you being our loving, wonderful Ramona and accidentally showed the invitation. <laughs> How was the first talk with you guys? I don't think I even asked you this, Teresa. Oh, um, it was fine. Cause she said she didn't mean to do it. Like she, it was, she said it was, it was an accident. You know, she was just excited. Oh, you, Ramona, you tell the story. Yeah, no, I mean, I, it, okay. This was like, okay. So I get invited to a lot of weddings. I have a lot of friends, like a lot of beautiful invitations. I came home, I opened this box and I was like floored how gorgeous Teresa's invitation was for her husband. And with all the fresh flowers and I'm like, and you know, and then, and then my daughter says, you know, Instagram story enough. So I just said, okay, this is a good Insta story. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And then I didn't realize I wasn't thinking, hello, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> didn't realize I'm paying the gorgeous invitation that it shows the address of the wedding. <laughs> and then, of course, I just think of Teresa as Teresa and Ramona's Ramona. I'm not thinking, oh, my God, we have so many fans, millions of fans, and they're just going like, to show up and, and, and just be not, standing Not just out. fans. I mean, it could be psychos, too, Ramona's. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. I never thought about it. So now it's like... It's 30 seconds later. No, half half hour later, half hour. Well, well, whatever. It was pretty fast. And Teresa's like, take it down. Take it down. Yeah, I'm like, take I it down. Ramona, you just I go, what are you talking about? On your story. I'm like, I go, oh, I- and then I'm like, I'm like, just take it down. Take it down right now. It's OK. It's OK. She's like, I'm sorry. I'm like, just take it down. It's OK. <laughs> yeah. I was a dimwit. No, because what are you going to do about it? It's like, I don't... No, but I was a dimwit. I wasn't thinking. That's all right. I wasn't thinking. What's one of the Ramonas, of the Ramona singer stingers, what's one of the craziest things like that you've done that you're like, holy shit balls? Did I just do that? I don't know. I do a lot of stuff. I can't can't keep track. You know what? I have to say she made me laugh. I love people that make me laugh. And she makes, Ramona made me laugh a lot. On the Ultimate Girl Trip, I was laughing a lot. We had fun. My face hurt because I was smiling so much. Yeah. You know what? Teresa and I did Closer to the Wedding. We did talk about that. I didn't ask about your first conversation, but I said, she was like, I can't believe it. And I go, you know what? Honestly, Teresa, anybody else, especially another woman in the world, I would say they were doing it to completely fuck with you. Ramona 
hands down, I can tell you, I don't even know the woman. She did it just being like, look at this cool invitation. Like, look how pretty it is. No. Yeah, I said most beautiful invitation exactly. I forgot. Exactly. That's exactly what I said to Teresa months Wait, did ago. you hear what she said? It was the most beautiful invitation she's ever gotten. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it was the most beautiful. It was. And then I had to send out second ones. Thanks to you, Ramona. <laughs> <laughs> what was the same address? You sent the same address? <laughs> no, I know that, but nobody knew that. And I, oh, tricky, yes, tricky. And I, changed, tricky and I changed the password. Yeah. So then I made the second ones. Um, they were rose box, and everybody kept them. As and I figured, you know, let me oh yeah, I have that. Yeah, and I was pretty. like, let me let me give these out as wedding favors. Yeah, because yeah, so they're flowers that. that will last forever. Yeah. Did you think that, or I remember too, one of your things with when you went on Carlos King? Did you think that moment about the whole like loser cast or whatever would blow up? Like it would be just as a thing. Like you just be talking, and you're like, this is I'm just in conversation, and they just take these words and go. You know what? Uh, sometimes I I put I just put the foot in my mouth. Is that the right word? I shouldn't have said that. It wasn't nice. And, you know, Bravo knows what they're doing. Bravo's been very good to me for very, very many years. And I would do the show all over again. And um, Bravo's been excellent to me. So I just wasn't being politically correct when I was saying those things. Ramona, are you down to do some rapid fire questions? Well, I'm not really good at this kind of game, but I'll try my best. Okay, Ramona, this is the thing. We're going to call it the Turtle Time Singer Stinger. We've got rapid game. I'm not a stinger. I don't know. That's, <laughs> the silly Luann calls me the Ramona stinger. And I'm really, I'm not really a mean girl. I'm not they call her Luman. Do you want that? Luman? Come on. What's better? So, well, there you go. See, we all have nicknames. Okay. Okay. So Ramona, just say the first housewife that pops into your head for each question. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to say something. The first housewife that comes to your mind. Am I going first or you? You go, Teresa. All right. Who's the life of the party? Me? Thank no. you. I knew she was going to say that. Stop. I knew. I, I was in the, Ramona, I was actually going to be pissed if you I didn't say you. I knew she was going to say that. Okay. <laughs> Who's the second life? We knew you were going to say you. Who would be the second life of the party? From from any franchise? Anyone. Okay, probably, you know, Sonia's very entertaining. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Most likely to get drunk the fastest from yours. Sonia. All right. Who's the most likely to get thrown out? Out of either a restaurant or a pub or a bar. Sonia. Who's most likely, and this can be anyone from you, from start to finish, Ramona, of you from one to now, who's most likely to spend money on something stupid? Well, I don't think anybody from my show, no. But, you know, Kyle has a lot of money to spend, so I'd say Kyle. Kyle. Or no, who's the other girl? Erica. Dorit. Dorit. Erica or Dorit, yeah. Who's most likely to be blocked on social media by other housewives? Maybe Bethany. <laughs> Where do you guys stand, you and Bethany? Oh, I'm friends with her. I like her. I admire her. You guys are cool. Yeah. But, you know, she has like a tough character like me. And she can rub people the wrong way. Like me. Are you and Joe cool? Yeah. I'm actually cool with everyone. Great. That's good. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Who's most likely to flake out or be a no-show on an event? Sonia. Oh my God, that's so funny. I swear, it's Sonia. She doesn't answer emails, texts. I mean, don't even ask. Yeah, you know what? I texted her too and she didn't get back to me. I was like, what the, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who's most likely to have a wardrobe ma- malfunction on camera? Sonia. I just saw Sonia. <laughs> yeah, but that's on purpose. Sonia's a hot mess. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, no, and it's true. There was one time we're filming. And she's on stage with Luann and her whole dress came undone and she's like completely naked. And another time too, her dress came undone when she's filming and it was two or three times. I've worked with Ramona, I mean, with Sonia also. She's so much fun too. She makes me laugh. Like I love her. I love her. Yeah, she's great energy. Who's the most likely to answer their phone if you call them in the middle of the night? In the middle of the night. Hmm. Probably Luann because Dorinda goes to sleep early. And you're closest to Luann and Dorinda, do you think? who Who's like your top two that you're closest with? Luann and Dorinda. And not Sonia? Sonia doesn't answer phones or texts or anything. She's always <laughs> MIA, missing in action, MIA. Like Luann will say, so when was the last time you heard from Sonia? I go, I don't know, like four months ago? What about you? Yeah, four months ago. Well, I texted her and she doesn't answer back. Yeah, I know. No, she just, she just, she's like, you know, MIA. Well, there you go, Teresa. It's not you. 
It's the whole world. Yeah, yeah no, I, I don't take offense. Yeah, that's all right. Um, who would you trust your deepest, darkest secrets to? On the show, you mean? Yeah, out of your cast. I, I think, I think Dorinda. Dorinda? Because I've known, I've had, I mean, I have a lot of history with her and Luann, and, but I think Dorinda, yeah. Who do you think of your cast, anybody, hooks up the most? Oh, I don't know. You? No, I'm not that kind of girl. <laughs> I, mean, I wish I did. I mean, maybe probably Luann. Luann? She's a free spirit. No, because you know what? Luann is very sexually free. And I even said on the ultimate, I wish I could be more like her. Like, you know, she could just go for it and go with it. And Wait, just, I mean, know. I have to say, like, I loved, well, both of them. I think you went topless, too, and in, in when we were in Turks and Caicos, right? I don't know. Was I? Ramona? Maybe. Well, yeah, no, was... but like, just to go sweat. Yeah, just the yeah, girls. Oh, the girls. Yeah, yeah, okay. Or, or, no, I'm trying to think if the camera got them, but who, ca I mean, who cares? They would just blur it out anyway. But yeah, Ramona's so comfortable on her body, which I love. And being... Oh, I walk around naked all the time. Yeah, and being around her and even Ramona, like, they made me more comfortable too. Like, you know, I've never gone topless on a beach and I think I would. Have you, Ramona? You shouldn't with those boobs. Well, I, I do if it's just, you know, a private villa or I'm just around with the girls. I mean, I'm not, I don't go to a public beach, even if I go to well, San Well, not Chope. a public beach. I'm just saying if you would go to like a high end, like beautiful resort. Yeah. If I, I've been to Capri, Positano on a boat and I'll take my top off and tan. Yeah. yeah. No, I've never done that. But but you're like that, Ramona. You're naked all the time walking around. Yeah. But you, you know, I, I feel very comfortable in my body. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I, I, I'm, un I'm uninhibited. But you don't like to sleep with a lot of guys. No. Well, that's there's two different things. One is just sexual sexual comfortability and one is sexual intimacy. I, I like to have a connection with a man intimately. I, I just can't be with the guy to be with the guy. I have to have a connection, a relationship. Is there like a, like a, I need this many dates or this much of time or are you ever like, oh my God, I'm just hot for you. Like how many times do we hear Mario? I'm just hot for Mario. If you're just like hot with somebody, will you just sleep with them? I think I, well, I did experiment it when I was, you know, when I first got divorced <laughs> and, but it just, you know, it was good for the first time, the first time you did it. But then the second time it was very empty and wasn't as hot and sexy. So I, so I gave up on that. <laughs> Oh my God, I could do this all day long. I totally got sidetracked off of the rapid fire. <laughs> I can all right, who's most likely to accidentally poison someone with terrible cooking? Um, actually, all of, everyone on the show is, is they know how to make great food. So actually, they're, you know, Dorinda, Sonia, Luann, I mean, Bethany, I mean, they we're all great chefs. Me, we all cook really well. So no one. Okay. Okay, Ramona, who? is the most likely to sleep with another housewife's family member. And I'm not talking about like their husband or their whatever, but like an uncle, a brother, whatever. I don't know. I don't want to touch that question. I, I plead the fifth. Okay. <laughs> That's the only one you're allowed, Ramona. Thank you. Okay. Ramona, Ramona, Ramona. This was... You know what? I knew that this was going to be some good time. You had fun? Yeah, it was so much fun. It was better than I thought. Well, I'm glad. So... And I thought it was going to be super dope. Like this was, this was, it was turtle time, man. It was freaking turtle right, well, Tune in to turtle time with Avery and Ramona, Ramona and Avery turtle time today. Yes, you guys, you guys, thank you as always. Ramona, singer. Thanks for having me on. Teresa. Thank oh, you. No, really thanks it. for, and you know what? It was fun. I didn't really know what to expect. And I actually had a lot of fun. Good. Yeah. And I actually can't believe how you kind of opened me up with certain questions I didn't really want to answer. So I hope my daughter doesn't get mad at me. R Ramona, <laughs> you're going to be doing this. This is an appetizer for turtle time. We're just trying to warm you up, baby. You're right. You're right. Ramona, by the way, now that I like know you, the next time we do this, it's going to be a whole nother ball game of questions, <laughs> baby. Uh -oh. This was my warm up. I like to go in and have fun. Not like messy, but like, let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about I you. I know. Look who's me. talking. She like, she has to, Josh has to beg for sex. No, oh, I <laughs> talk a big game. I will, I will do. What do you mean? Wait, whoa, whoa. What is your husband? Okay. My one rule, people ask me, what's your rule for a long marriage, a good relationship? Every Saturday night, Melissa, you lock that damn door from 5 to 7 p.m. Two hours? Okay, an hour. Yes, you like an hour. Kids? Yeah. How about five minutes? You tell your children you're on a private play date with your husband. When they're older, they'll figure out you're having sex or something. You put something sexy on. 
a nice something sexy girl, light the candles, have his favorite drink, the music, and you just shut that door. If you have sex, you do. If you don't, you don't. But at least you have that intimate time once a week for an hour and a half. I'm no, telling you, you right now. You definitely will have sex if you have. To- On what yeah. planet oh, yeah. do you crazy ladies think I am getting an hour and a half away from my freaking maniacs? Wait a minute. You have a, ba- a nanny, don't you? I need two pump chump and we're done. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. No, no, no. no. All right. So I. I just said this. I never went away with my ex. I went away once, Ramona, to St. Bart's 11 years ago. That was my first right. vacation, you know, without the kids. And, and I already had four kids at the time. My baby was almost three. That was my first time away. I went to St. Bart's 11 years ago. No, once a year, you have to go away without the kids. Listen, once a year. Listen. Once a week, you lock that damn door for two hours. Two hours. I talk a game that I play hard to get and I don't get blowjobs and I don't have sex. Listen, we get it in. We get it in. We get it in. A lot. (laughs) No, but it's called intimacy. Melissa, it's called intimacy. Listen, I sent him a picture of my boob this morning after our kid got sick. I love that. Is that intimate, Ramona? Only one boob? One. That's all he needs. No, send them two. Both of them go like that. Two. Then he's at home, and I I don't Wait, have time send him right a picture now. of your send him a bo- picture of your body naked. Put something sexy oh, on. God, send him a, a picture of, of it. It was time for all that. No, it's not a lot of work. Just do it. I need to get Botox right, over. I need to do that. Okay, <laughs> Ramona. See, this is why you got to come back for round two. I okay. You're gonna try it. I want you to try it just for an hour. Then put put the, your kid's favorite movie on, and say we're having. Daddy and I are having a play date, a private play okay, date. Okay, so you know what? Come back in the I'm hour. Going, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to tell you guys, and I will right now, I will bet you that in three minutes, one of the maniacs is already laying in the bed with us. But I will try it for shits and giggles for you guys. Okay? And then I will <laughs> tell you, I'll put my stopwatch on and we'll go, okay, Josh, you ready? Let's see how long it takes. By the way, Ramona, do you want to know this? This is We tried to do that little thing the other day. Kids, Moana, ooh, Moana, go watch it upstairs. Come downstairs. We start going. You know, he's trying to be all f- sweet and like, for- I'm like, what are you doing? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Literally, Logan busts in and goes, Mommy, why are your boobies out? And Daddy, you had shorts on. Why, is it, why isn't your door locked? They're yes. maniacs. They could like sugar it and go. No, you got to lock. Yeah, you have to lock the door. My kids are maniacs. They can. You have to train. Then you didn't train them correctly. Clearly, it's your fault. Clearly, true. it's your this fault. Is, this is true. <laughs> you know what? When it when it comes back, to, it's always mom's fault. But you know what? This is my homework for right now. I will do that. I will try it out, and I will get back to you guys and let you know. And when we come back and we do this on round two, or when Teresa and I come on Turtle Time, I'll let you know. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Too. This was awesome, Ramona. <laughs> this was awesome. <laughs> Look at her. She's like, Avery, don't go talk to her. She's crazy. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> this was amazing. You guys, and we have to listen. You guys, we have to thank Ramona Singer for joining us today. Don't forget to check out Ramona and her daughter Avery's brand new podcast, Turtle Time, wherever you listen to your podcast. And of course, don't forget. You have to give us a follow, a rate, a review. All of us, Turtle Time, Teresa and I, your favorite namaste bitches. Thank you guys always for listening, Ramona. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ramona. Thank you for having me. Love, love, love you. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you, you, Ramona. And good luck with your podcast. Thank you so much. See what's screaming all month long during Pluto TV's April Ghouls. Watch hauntingly good movies like Evil Dead and Cloverfield or terrifying shows like The Walking Dead and Nosferatu. Plus, Pluto TV has hundreds of channels with thousands more movies and TV shows available on live and on demand. Download the free Pluto TV app.